As we move ever closer to the conference in Marrakech, where I believe that partnerships of all varieties must be a constant thread in our discussions, I think the gathering today could not be more timely or more uh, better calibrated. Much of what I will have to say will echo very much the comments that were just made by the Director General, stressing the crucial aspect of rappeler le caractère uh, crucial. So I would like to focus my comments this system is preparing to ensure that it is best placed to fully support the implementation of the Global Compact for Migration. And I stress again that this will require a very strong and clear sense of partnership at two levels. First, obviously, partnership amongst the many parts of the United Nations, which can bring to bear an extraordinarily large and deep capacity and expertise on the whole range of issues covered by the compact. And secondly, of course, a broader partnership will also need to draw equally on the uh, large variety of competences and expertise on these issues represented by the multi-stakeholders that have been so far very engaged in this process and many of whom are present here today. Next week, the UN system will meet again here in Geneva to activate the UN network on migration. This network, welcomed in the agreed text on the Global Compact last July, was actually called for by the Secretary General in his January report entitled Making Migration Work for All. It represents the visible manifestation of our collective commitment to support the compact's implementation in a coherent, collaborative, systemic fashion, while bringing IOM squarely into the center of this UN endeavor. By now, I think the network's contours are very well known, but let me just refresh your memory in uh, mapping out its general framework. First, IOM will serve as the coordinator and secretariat of the network which will have several functions. It will draw fully from the technical expertise and experience of the relevant entities within the United Nations, and it will ground its work in the UN Charter, in international law, and in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, alongside, obviously, the framework of the compact itself. It will fully align its work with existing coordination mechanisms and the repositioning of the UN development system, which you know is at the heart of the Secretary General's reform agenda. It will be structured around a small core group of UN entities. It will also have an extended membership drawn from the UN system and a small number of working groups chaired by a UN entity with IOM as its secretariat and with external partners, as may be desirable for the work of these working groups. And it will also have, as part of its structure, a capacity building mechanism, which is called for in the Global Compact itself. And this, you will remember, comprises three parts, a startup fund, a connection hub, and a knowledge platform. It would be inappropriate to get too far ahead of the meeting next week except to say that I'm very confident that we're on track. Terms of reference for the network are close to being finalized. And likewise, the initial composition of its core group and of its extended memberships, uh, I think, hopefully are coming together and the meeting next week will lend further clarity on the question of how the network's uh, working groups will be organized and setting some initial priorities. By the time we gather in Marrakesh, the network will have a much clearer sense <clears throat> on how best it can move rapidly to help support the compact's implementation. I'd like to impress here upon you a number of features of the network's DNA. First, its agility. We are determined that the network must, at every stage, place priority on supporting member states' implementation of the compact. This, rather than elaborating grounding legislation or intricate structures, 
must be at the forefront of the planning. This means not engaging in work that is already being done well by others. It also means being ready to change tack as circumstances warrant. And it means being responsive as appropriate to calls for support, whether these calls come from member states, UN country teams, or other partners. The network's working group should reflect exactly that agility. They should be task-oriented, and in my view, whenever possible, they should be time-bound. Those working groups that achieve little should be stood down, and those that deliver could be scaled up. Lessons must be learned from both, and indeed in setting up the working groups, in how they run, in how they impact, their impact is measured, the network has perhaps its biggest opportunity to actually do things differently. And I say that very much in the spirit again of the UN uh, management and development system reform that the Secretary General has put forward. Second, the network must be greater than the sum of its parts. We should encourage a focus on those projects which require input from a wide range of UN entities. The network should not, on the other hand, supplant the mandate-driven work of its members, nor, on the other hand, should it seek to simply uh, be a grouping of otherwise disconnected people. Rather, it should seek to maximize impact grounded in a spirit of collaboration and commitment to collective success. Third, while focusing on results, actually on implementation, the network must also ensure an appropriate balance of its work. One of the strengths of the compact, as it's been stressed many times, is its comprehensive approach. In the very words of the compact, as was stressed by the co-facilitators throughout this process, the compact possesses a 360 degrees vision. In saying that, we need to be clear that the scope of the compact's objectives alongside its commitment to a comprehensive approach, present both a challenge and an opportunity for the network. The challenge is how best to deliver uniformly on all fronts, given obviously limited resources. The opportunity lies in the range of expertise on which the UN system can draw, including, and I stress, with its external partners. Fourth, the network is fully aware that it does not operate in a vacuum. If we have learned anything from the process of putting together the compact, it's the sheer number and range of actors who can contribute to this collective agenda. Formally, informally, at all levels and in all different combinations, engagement with partners will be frequent and intensive in two ways. In other words, don't wait for us to call, don't hesitate to call the network, and I know most of you will not be shy to do so. <laughs> My fifth point should be self-evident, namely that it is vital for the network's success that both its members and partners, particularly member states, do all they can to support it. During the recent, the recent high-level week of the General Assembly, um, Secretary General Guterres had this to say, and I quote him. I think there's a type of schizophrenic debate within the humanitarian and development community. Everybody asks for coordination. Everybody asks for accountability. Everybody asks for transparency. And then we have this trend of each one going by itself, those at the donor level and also those at the agency level. Let's not permit the same to be true for the migration community. I'm out of the quote now. I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> I think this network needs to be organic. There will be many opportunities for course corrections. Nothing should be set in stone. Right now, its most pressing need is for it to come into being and to begin, begin the work for which it is tasked. The network actually exists. It is. Uh, provided uh, for in the compact, but it now has to um, start doing its work, and this will, I think, start uh, on a very strong foot next week. But your support, all of you in this room, for this network uh, 
to start working and to start doing things differently will be critical. And finally, I think the network must approach its work with a combination of both humility and urgent ambition. Humility because the scale of the tasks ahead of us are pretty monumental and because overselling ourselves will not serve any good purpose. Humility too because of the very human dimension of migration. It's in fact very much its human dimension that has made it so difficult to tackle international migration for so long inside the UN system, and yet it's also that human dimension that has brought us to where we are today. And for the same reason, I think we must approach this task with urgent ambition. In some six months, the United Nations membership was able to agree on a far-reaching framework to cooperate on one of the most pressing issues of our time. They, you, deserve nothing less than a system that does all it can to help realize the scale of that ambition. Thank you very much.